hadn't won an MVC title since 1991, and they are 16 and six here at home this year. And then for Northern Iowa, they need to get off to a good start and have that focus. We touched on that they've had to sit for a day, watch other teams compete. They need to come in. They know they have a, a target on their back being the number one seed, but they need to have that good focus and they need to get that good strong pitching from Jamie Fisher. The first time she faced these uh, Southern Illinois Slukies, the two times gave up five hits, no runs. Let's take a look at our starting lineup for Southern Illinois, which is in the awkward position perhaps of being the visiting team on its home field for this tournament. And uh, that is brought to you by SLU Care Orthopedic Sports Medicine Specialist at St. Louis, St. Louis University Hospital who can help keep you in the game. Mallory Duran Sellers, the conference player of the year, leads it off. And you see there in the nine hole, Michelle Bradley, yesterday's hero for the Salukis. And we are just about set for softball. Kerry Blaylock, of course, the veteran head coach of the Southern Illinois Salukis. And the first pitch from Jamie Fisher is in there for strike one. Fisher, again, the Valley Pitcher of the Year, facing the Player of the Year. Ground ball to second, and out at first is Julie Hunter throws out Mallory Duran Sellers. Let's go ahead and take a look at our Northern Iowa defense, which is made possible by Purina Dog Chow. Long live your dog. And or we'll see how Coach Ryan Jacobs and his squad responds to having to sit around for that extra day. Well, I think this is a ball club that uh, just has a purpose this season. They've uh, really banded together. They uh, have a theme that uh, you need to be positive about everything that you do, and uh, this team has really come together this season. And nice effort, and uh, let's hope everybody's okay down there. What effort by Whitney Pleen to go into the dugout. Let's have another look at our State Farm replay. She almost comes up with this ball. Well, she got a good jump on it, and... Uh, I think she realized she reached out, but I knew, think she thought that the fence was coming and it was there, but uh, that's a great effort to start the ball game. So the 1-1 one, one pitch now to Kelsey Ashton. Ashton, the third baseman for the Salukis. Ashton, a 282 hitter coming into the ball game. Now Fisher has just been dominant for the Panthers this season. They have really relied on her strength in the circle. She does a great job of moving the ball around. She has a variety of pitches, and uh, she's just been stellar, and the defense behind her has been very good. 203 strikeouts and 183 innings coming into this one. She has a 20 and three mark, 1.34 ERA. Well, you talked about it. You got the good, strong pitching, but you also have a very potent offense in Southern Illinois with their batting average. They are the top team in the conference as far as batting average goes. So they are a formidable lineup for Fisher. She's given up 118 base hits, just 47 runs, just 35 earned runs during the course of the season. Fisher just a sophomore out of Conrad, Iowa. And Ashton is able to work the count full, three and two. Our next game will feature the Two-seed Illinois State Redbirds taking on the third-seed Drake Bulldogs. An unusual development, at least in recent history, is concerned. Ball four, and Ashton draws a one-out walk. But an unusual development in this tournament compared to recent years, and that is thus far the highest seed has won every game. Yeah, normally when you get to this point in the tournament, you've had at least one upset that Somebody's knocked off a, a number two or a number one seed, but uh, seed has hold, held true to form here in this tournament so far. Taylor Orsburn, a sophomore from Alto Pass, Illinois, stands in. She is the first baseman for Southern Illinois. Fouls it straight back, a good looking cut. When you talked about uh, Northern Iowa really separated themselves from the rest of the pack, and they didn't lose a game in the conference until they lost to Bradley on April 18th. So they went undefeated until Bradley knocked them off. So that's a really good start for them to be able to set the tone. Here's the 0-2. Just missing off the outside corner. One and two now the count. Our umpires, by the way, for this afternoon's first semifinal, Jeff Sloan calling balls and strikes. Linda Hoover at first base and Rick Boyer at third. The one-two, chopped a second. 
Go to first is in time advancing on the play to second base is Kelsey Ashton so she is in scoring position with two outs. Well, and a, a good play by Hunter over there at second base, doing a good job of letting the ball come to her, knowing she was not going to be able to turn that double play, just get the out. Haley Gorman stands in. She is the shortstop for the Saluki, second on the team with a 331 batting average. And she looks at strike one. Gorman, a senior from Arcadia, California. She has a chance here to put her team on the board in the top of the first inning against the Valley's Pitcher of the Year. Wave and a miss. Quickly Gorman in a hole 0-2. Well, that's what we talked about. They wanted to jump out and make a statement. They, they've done that a good percentage of their games this season where they've been able to score in the first inning, put the pressure on the opposing team. This one misses. 1-2 and two now the count. And I think right now you're, you're seeing Fisher and Reimer really trying to figure out where that umpire zone is. And they're, they're working the corners, they're working the ball up and down until they really figure out where that strike zone is. That one was not close to the strike zone, <laughs> <No>. so we're <laughs> even at two and two. Well, you have to test the outer limits of that strike zone a little right, bit. You gotta work it, <laughs> see how far you can go. Here's the pitch foul straight back by Gorman. Boy, that was a good pitch to to handle, she just got a piece of it, but it was up in her eyes. That was a ball that she could have driven. So two and two to count. Uh, the Salukis would have to think come in with some momentum. They played it. Certainly, SIU fans would agree the most exciting game of the tournament thus far. That was a victory over Creighton yesterday. It's popped up by Gorman, shallow center. Allison Galvin makes the catch, and the side is retired. So a single and a runner stranded for SIU in the top of the first. We head to the bottom of the first. SIU nothing, and you and I coming to bat. They're two of a kind, and just like toddlers, puppies need food made for them. That's why there's Purina Puppy Chow. With all the essential nutrients your growing puppy needs, Purina Puppy Chow. I'm Rick Navarre, president of St. Louis-based Peabody Energy. Peabody is the world's largest coal company. Coal is vital to America. It provides half the electricity in the United States. Peabody fuels electricity needs in 21 countries on six continents. And we are a global leader in clean coal solutions, providing affordable energy security and made in America economic stimulus. I invite you to visit us at PeabodyEnergy.com. Who could resist the call of America's number one puppy food brand? With DHA and essential nutrients also found in mother's milk. Purina Puppy Chow. As we move to the bottom of the first inning, let's take a look at our starting lineup for Northern Iowa. Presentation of Slew Care Orthopedic Sports Medicine Specialists at St. Louis, St. Louis University Hospital can help keep you in the game. And a couple of all-conference first-teamers in the lineup, Mackenzie Day and Samantha Reimer, the catcher, Whitney Pleen, the third baseman, and all-Valley second-team selection. That's a, that's a pretty good lineup that Northern Iowa is putting out there. And don't underestimate, they have some power in their lineup. And uh, it doesn't always show, it doesn't always come to the top, but uh, they do have power when they need it. Ryan Jacobs, the head coach. And he and his staff voted as the coaching staff of the year in the Missouri Valley. Day off the handle to shallow left, and what a play by Michelle Bradley. Michelle Bradley continues to electrify these SIU fans. She had outstanding defensive play to end the game yesterday, and she had the game-winning home run to boot. Let's have another look. And again, we have seen her cover a lot of ground kept her eye on the ball the entire time. And that's tough to do for an outfielder because you have your feet pounding as you're running, trying to keep an eye on that ball, lays out and grabs it. Or a Turner, the designated player, stands in now for the Panthers. Turner, a senior from West Des Moines, Iowa. In the circle is Brittany Lang. And the pitch is high and away. Lang, a 381 ERA. This is her. 20th start on the season. And the pitch fouled straight back. A good cut by Turner. One and two 
is the count. Well, Turner's a player that uh, is finally getting her shot to play, and she's really come on, has been on the team for three years, and now is getting the starting role as the DH and really making the most of it this season. Strike three call as Turner is set down. Let's take a look at our defense for Southern Illinois, made possible by Purita Dog Chow. Long live your dog. We've already seen some stellar defense here in the first inning, provided by Michelle Bradley in left field, the Valley Player of the Year, Mallory Duran Sellers in center. And the pitch on the way to Hannah Borschel. Misses for ball one. Going back to Lang, 10 and six on the season, 114 innings pitch. She's second on the team in that category. 71 strikeouts, 59 walks, and, and Lang is just a junior from Leavenworth, Kansas. And it was, we had some suspense about who was going to start in the circle for Southern Illinois. Gary well, Blaylock opting to go with Lang. When these two teams met in their three game series, Lang only pitched two and a third innings against them. So it's a little bit different look. They're getting a pitcher that they haven't seen a whole lot of before. Borschel with a good cut, an aggressive swing, but count is now even at two and two. As Lang trying to put down the Panthers one, two, three here in the first inning. First of two semifinals today here on Valley Live. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Popped up, left side, and that one will fall just out of play. Good hustle by everybody. The entire left side of the field going after that ball just in case there's a chance that it may stay fair. We do have a little bit of wind today, too, and it might push the ball around, but not a, not a ton. I don't think it's going to be a huge factor. 2-2 two -two again, and again it goes to the left side, and Bradley can't quite get to this one once they get a good effort. They're giving her a workout over there. Panthers taking some very aggressive swings against Lang. Well, and, and I think that's just been their makeup all season long. I think they go to the plate, they're the aggressor, doesn't matter who's in the circle, and as I said, this is a, a pitcher that they have not seen a lot of this season. 2-2, two, two, and again it's to the left side, and again it falls. So Borschel just keeps stroking it to the left side, fighting off pitches. And if you're Bradley over there in left field, you might cheat a little bit over. You might start thinking about cheating over the left field line, but it just depends on how they're going to pitch Borschel here. You have to adjust your defense according to the pitches. High and tight, three and two, as Borschel tries to get on with two outs. Borschel a 282 hitter coming into the game. First action for Northern Iowa in the tournament. Southern Illinois knocked off Creighton yesterday. Swing and a miss on the changeup, and Brittany Lang strikes out a pair of Panthers. One, two, three goes you and I in the first. We're through one, no score. Slough Care Sports Medicine at St. Louis University Hospital treats sports injuries such as ACL tears, rotator cuff injuries, and early knee arthritis that often result from the weekend warrior activities of people who exercise occasionally. If you have a sports injury, let our team help you get back in the game. To schedule an appointment at our Midtown or West County offices, call 314-977-4440 or visit slewhospital.com. Where can you get the best milk? From Tom, from Russ, from Laura, and Maggie. It comes from all of us. We're Prairie Farms, and we don't just work for the dairy, we are the dairy. Making sure the dairy products in your child's school, in your stores, and on your table are fresh and healthy. Handled with the kind of care that your family deserves. We are Prairie Farms Dairy. Ask for us, the farmer-owned dairy. Be sure to catch our next game here on Valley Live coming up at 2.30 Central Time as the second seed Illinois State Redbirds take on the third seed of Drake Bulldogs right here at Charlotte West Stadium in Carbondale. That's right here on Valley Live. And uh, we could not have asked for better weather for this 2012 State Farm Missouri Valley Conference Softball Championship. You see some of the Panthers fans and a lot of Saluki fans here as you would expect. 
as we head to the top of the second inning. And Allie Vadbunker stands in for the Salukis. Vadbunker, a 311 hitter, seven home runs, but the stat that might jump out at you most as she waves and misses at a Fisher offering. She's been hit by 28 pitches this season. And you know, you wonder how that happens. You figure every once in a while you're gonna get hit by one or maybe two, but over 20, 20 times she gets on base. I mean, and, and she's been plunked a lot, but tell you what, she's taking one for the team and, and getting on base. One-two pitch popped up, and will it stay in play? It will not. Well, both these pitchers are, are getting a lot of pop-ups. Everything's getting pulled to the left side, so you're going to have to see some adjustments in the in the pitching patterns. Yeah, but you figure 28 hit by pitches in 54 games. I mean, that's a little bit better than every other game. <laughs> I know, I, I know, and she just keeps, you know, and she's not even heavily guarded as far as equipment on her arms and on her legs. You see a lot of players that get hit by pitches, they get all the gear on and and uh, she does have that sleeve on her forearm, but for the most part, she just takes it in stride. So she has a, a 508 on base percentage. She works the count full here, three and two. Good cut straight back. You were ready for that one. I was, that was just a reaction. Uh, <laughs> Thank goodness we have a little shield in front of us. And Laura Leonard does not flinch. <laughs> well, good at bad for uh, Bad Bunker. Got down in the count. And a nice play at short by Mackenzie Day. That took a hop on her at the last minute. She stayed with it and threw out Bad Bunker, one gone. And I don't know if Fisher got a piece of that as it came right back through the circle or not, but uh, Day was right there. Let's take a peek and see. Nope, she didn't touch that at all. And you're right, it came up on her, almost handcuffed her, but she just little hop, got it within her glove and made the throw across. Jana Spivey stands in, the second baseman for the Saluki. Spivey, a sophomore from Rose Claire, Illinois. Spivey had a couple of hits and a run driven in yesterday, and she goes today again. Two gone. So far, this defense behind Fisher has looked very good. You can tell that they're very fundamentally sound, the way they go down for the ball, their hands, good soft hands to get the, the ball in their glove, and, and the good pinpoint throws. Meredith Wilson stands in now, swings and a miss. Wilson, the right fielder, a freshman from Granite City, Illinois, and a product of St. Joseph's Academy. Fisher delivers, popped up. Hunter underneath it, doesn't have to move a lot, makes the catch, and one, two, three, go the Salukis in the second inning. We're through an inning and a half, no score. It's the playoffs. We haven't served a single calorie all season, and we're not serving one now. If you can't handle it, go sell foam fingers in the parking lot. How many calories are you carrying? Zero. How much Pepsi taste? A lot. Now get out there and make me proud. Yeah. Pepsi Max, zero calories, maximum Pepsi taste. Whether you're in Carbondale, Illinois for the big game, vacationing or on business, stay at the official hotel of the Missouri Valley Conference, the Holiday Inn Conference Center. The Holiday Inn Conference Center features relaxing guest rooms, an indoor pool, workout facilities, and a free high-speed wireless. Coolahan's next to the Holiday Inn Conference Center features a huge variety of food and drink offerings each day. The place to stay when following the Salukis or your favorite Valley school, the Holiday Inn Conference Center, the official hotel of the MVC. 
Today's Prairie Farms MVC Scholar Athlete of the Game is Northern Iowa's Whitney Plain, a senior infielder from Burlington, Iowa. Plains batting 331 with eight doubles, a triple, nine homers, 33 RBI, and 18 stolen bases this season. Plato has a 3.2 GPA in chemistry education, ranked second in the league with a 597 in slugging percentage. The farmer owned Prairie Farms Family of Dairies, Prairie Farms Highland and Roberts Farm Fresh Quality from our family to yours. And uh, the quick work continues by Brittany Lang as she coaxes a ground out from Gina Brown. Well, quick work by Lang, and uh, she is very efficient in the circle. And I know we talked about that yesterday, how we really like to see pitchers that uh, go to work quickly in the circle and uh, go about their business going after these hitters. Well, this Northern Iowa team has not seen Brittany Lang a whole lot in their three meetings in the regular season. Only two and a third innings Lang pitched against the Panthers. So probably one time through the lineup for UNI to really get a handle on what Lang is, is going to throw to them. Samantha Reimer's in the box now for the Panthers and uh, really trying to work the count. Uh, three and one now, trying to get herself on base. And there's a little grounder over to second base where Jana Spivey picks it up and gets the second out of the inning. So this defense for both teams, very good, very solid behind their pitchers. And here's a good look, a good pitch. Just kind of handcuffs Reimer a little bit. Wasn't able to get the fat part of the bat out, get it through the zone and knocks it over to the right side and they record the out. As we talked about, both of these defenses very good behind their pitchers so far in this ball game, and that makes it a little bit easier for the two young ladies in the circle to know that they have that solid defense behind them that they can go ahead and get the ball in play and let them do their work. Now the count even at one and one for Galvin. Two down here in the inning, and uh, Galvin trying to get herself on to keep the inning alive for the Panthers. Two one pinch on the way, and it is slapped down the line. Boy, Bradley had a beat on it again, didn't she? She's, <laughs> she's on her toes. I, she's she's ready to go in left field. And tell you what, when you have outfielders that know that your pitcher's working quick, they're ready to go, get a good read off the bat, that is helpful to your defense when that pitcher gets the ball, goes right back to work. Popped up. And one, two, three. Go the Panthers in the second. So a quick pace so far through two, no score. One of the best things about State Farm is our accessibility. Oh yeah? You can call us 24 seven, get quotes online, start a claim with our smartphone app. You name it, we're here anytime, anywhere. Any way you want it. That's the way I need it. Any way you want it. All night, all night. Every night. Any way you want it. That's the way I need it. We just had ourselves a little journey moment there. Yep. Saw in 83 in Fresno. Place was crawling with chicks. I gotta go. Any way you want it, it's the way you need it, any way you want it. Why do I play? I play to decide her fate. I play for the power of the ball in my hand. I play because I can choose my own fate. I play to be the hero. We move to the top of the third inning, 2012 State Farm Missouri Valley Conference Softball Championship. R.C. McBride, Laura Leonard, our entire web stream productions crew doing a fantastic job as always. You see there the Drake Bulldogs readying to play the next game. Drake is the three seed. 
And uh, the Bulldogs will take on the two seated Illinois State Redbirds. Standing in to lead off the third inning is Alicia Junker. And she looks at a ball one from Jamie Fisher. Junker is senior from Saugus, California. High and tight, 2 0. We saw a couple of times yesterday that uh, first time through the batting order, the lineup's really trying to get a good look at the pitcher, and then the second time through, everybody kind of had a beat on him. This one is well hit, deep center, but drifting back and making the catch is Galvin. Well, that looked like trouble off the bat, didn't it? It really did, and, and Galvin didn't panic at all. She just drifted back to the warning track and hauled it in, and. Uh, it, it sounded really good coming off the bat, but uh, just did not have enough to get over the fence. Junker making a bid for her first home run of the season, but coming up a little bit short, one gone, and now Michelle Bradley stands in, the ninth place hitter, and she looks at a strike. Bradley is a junior from Land Lakes, Florida, and a great story yesterday, the, the game deciding home run, a great defensive play with the tying run on to end the game. And on top of that, it was the first time that her father had been able to see her play in this stadium. So a pretty, pretty neat story there. Well, and they talked to her after the game. She got a little emotional about it, as you should. I think it uh, was a heck of a game by her with the deciding home run and then a stellar defensive play out in left field to end the ball game. And then along with it, your dad's here for the first time to be able to see you play. That's kind of an emotional uh, day for a young gal. Fouled away. And she already has a great defensive play on her record today. Now sometimes you get into these tournaments, you get into a weekend like this, and one of your teammates catches fire, and right now for Southern Illinois, it's, it's Bradley. Bradley swings and misses there, however. Two gone. First strikeout for Jamie Fisher. Let's have another look. Did a really good job of working around the plate. That's a tough pitch out there on the outside corner, knee high. Mallory Duran Sellers stands in now. She grounded out the second her first time up, and she looks at strike one. Still a little, a little surprising. Southern Illinois trying to make Jamie Fisher work a little bit, and that was uh, her first strikeout. Again, you're talking about a, a player that averages more than a strikeout per inning pitched. She's bidding for a second strikeout here. Well, and, and you have to wonder if the fact that they had to sit for a day and watch the other teams play, that she still needs to get into a little bit of a rhythm and into a groove. A little meeting between both sides on the infield as well as the offensive side of things. The 0-2, chop the second, side retired. So one, two, three, go the Salukis. Now through two and a half, still no score. Cardinals fans, we invite you to join us at home plate this season. We want thousands in Cardinals Nation to make a pledge to Homers for Health. Each time a Cardinal player hits a home run, we will all make a contribution to SSM Cardinal Glennon Children's Medical Center to help cure kids. Pledge forms are available at all Deerberg stores. Big dramatic walk-off home run should cost double. Centene Charitable Foundation will match your pledge to Homers for Health, powered by Peabody and you. Pledge at Glennon.org. I know a thing or two about walk-offs. Like this? Don't walk off. Bueno, who's this? Oh, him? This little guy's my Twitterer. Your Twitterer? Yeah, you know, I say funny stuff sometimes, or something funny will happen. He tweets it out to my fans. Oh, yeah? Like what? I don't know. Stuff. Head to Bush Stadium for Budweiser Championship Beer Stein Night, Friday, May 25th, when the Cards host the Phillies. Tickets available at cardinals.com. 
We head to the bottom of the third inning. Still no score. Remember, you can catch the title game of the State Farm Missouri Valley Conference Softball Championship tomorrow with the winner receiving the league's automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. Now, remember, this game will not be here on Valley Live. Coverage will start tomorrow at 2 o'clock Central on Fox Sports Midwest, Fox Sports Indiana, Fox Sports Kansas City, Fox College Sports, Comcast Sportsnet Chicago, and on ESPN3. Whitney Pleen leads off the third inning for Northern Iowa, facing Brittany Lang. Well, you asked at the beginning of the game, was it going to be a pitcher's duel or was it going to be an offensive performance? So far, it's pitcher's duel. Both of these pitchers very good, having the ball in and around the plate, and they're having good defense behind them to back them up. Well, you know, Senior from Burlington, Iowa, an All-Valley second team selection, second on the team in batting average with three at 331. Leads the team in both homers and has a share of the team lead and runs driven in, pops this one up. It'll carry out a play. Nine homers, 33 RBI. Tied for the team lead in that department with Gina Brown. She's also a player that didn't play a whole lot early on in her career and now has really established herself strongly in the lineup. On the infield, Spivey makes the catch. That'll bring Melissa Walls to the plate for the first time. A junior from Tiffin, Iowa playing right field, 241 hitter. And a real good pace to this ball game thus far. And you can, that is usually the case when both pitchers are feeling confident. And you can just tell with both of the, the pitchers the way they're handling themselves, their body language when they step on the rubber, when they get the ball back in the circle, they are ready to go. Wave and a miss. Oh, and two. Julie Hunter, the ninth place hitter on deck, held up just in time. Both these pitchers really working ahead in the count, getting on top of the hitters, putting them on the defense, and making them have to shorten up that stroke a little bit and protect at the plate. This one well struck to center field, but Duran Sellers with a great jump brings it in. Two gone. At first look at that, it looked like it was tailing away from her, but then she was, with her speed, able to catch up to it and haul it in easily. She must have, and it looked like she did, get a great read off the bat. And a lot of times, as you know, good outfielders, good infielders for that matter, will, will know what pitch is coming and can tell where the pitch is going where the ball should go, and that can make a huge difference. Well, and a lot of times you'll see the infielders signal to the outfielders what kind of pitch is coming so they can adjust a little bit, knowing that if they're going to the outside corner, they may want to adjust a little bit, or if they want to go inside, they adjust a different way, and you'll see infield and outfield shift according to what pitch is being called. So Hunter stands in now, one and one the count, and the changeup misses. Two and one. Well, I think defense has been the key so far in, in this ball game. There's some been well struck balls, but the defense, especially in the outfield, gotten great jumps and helped their pitcher out. Hunter trying to get on for the top of the order with two outs here in the bottom of the third. Pitch on the way. Cued in foul territory to fall harmlessly. Really just, uh, she didn't get a whole lot of that one right off the end of the bat. And it seems like on both sides, there's just been a few solid hits here and there, but for the most part, they've been pop-ups, easy grounders. So the pitchers right now have the upper hand. So the 3-2, this is outside. So the first base runner to reach is Julie Hunter, the ninth place hitter. And she does so in the form of a base on balls. You have to feel pretty good about that performance, I think, uh, thus far, if you're Carrie Blaylock and the SIU coaching staff. Well, they, 
obviously have confidence in her, otherwise she wouldn't be out there in the circle, but you gotta be pleased with the way that she's handled it. In so the far. center field for a base hit. Haley Gorman almost able to come up with that. That is the first base hit. As we have another look at our State Farm replay. Just out of the reach of Gorman, a well-placed hit by McKenzie Day, and now Northern Iowa in business with runner in scoring position. Gorman almost took a little stutter step as she was going for the ball. I don't know if she misread it something or was expecting a hop, perhaps. You know, when we've seen some funny hops on this field over the course of the, the games yesterday, we've seen some balls hop up, we've seen some balls just stay down, and so maybe that had a factor in it, that she saw something that she thought it might pop up into her glove. So Laura Turner, who struck out her first time up, stands in with an opportunity to do some damage with two on and two out, and a count even at a ball and a strike. So we'll see how Brittany Lang does under adversity for the first time in the ball game. Really the first time either pitcher has been in any sort of real trouble. Well, knowing that you already have two outs in the bank, it, it takes a little of the pressure off, but still that runner out on second poses a little bit of uh, worry for the pitcher. Well, that assumes that you're you're focusing on the batter, which Lang appears to be doing in this situation, but a lot of times not doing so just because you have runners on, even with two outs, will get you in some trouble. And that's what you have to like about uh, Lang's performance right now. She's going after the hitter, not worrying about who's on base. And sometimes you're right, that gets a pitcher into trouble, worrying a little bit too much what's going on in the base paths behind them rather than focusing in on what's in front of them. So the 2-2 pitch on the way. Barely getting a piece of it was Turner to stay alive. Well, with two strikes, we always talk about protecting the plate and anything that's close, you have to go out and try to foul it off. See Bad Bunker checking her wrist to see what kind of a pitch they're calling. And a nice play by Brittany Lang. You could tell it was spinning on her and she gets herself out of trouble. Three are complete in Carbondale, no score. Grind virtually any kind of food waste into an unending source of electrical power for a city? When Emerson takes up the challenge, it's never been done before, simply becomes consider it solved. Emerson. They sacrifice, they protect, they answer the call at all times. They are the men and women of our armed forces and their will, heart, dedication, and service to the country that we call home is nothing less than extraordinary. Return the favor. Text the word return to 90999 now for your $10 donation or simply visit returnthefavor.org. Please join us in returning the favor. Part of the order due up and the second time through the order as we take a look at Old Glory waving in the breeze on a beautiful day at Charlotte West Stadium. Well, second time through the lineup sometimes uh, yields a few hits because the, the first time through you're trying to get a handle on what the pitcher's throwing and have a chance to talk about it with your teammates. Now you get a second crack at her. Kelsey Ashton, the third baseman, stands in. She has the lone Saluki hit in the ball game. Or check that, she walked, didn't she? Yes, she did walk. This one is cranked to deep left field, but back on it is Borschel on the track. And it does not look like the ball is carrying today. It doesn't. We've seen several balls. What I think yesterday might have been out of here. There's a good swing, maybe a little bit underneath it, but they just are not carrying well at all to the outfield. Well, that's the second ball that we've seen the Salukis hit that just looked a lot better off the bat. This one off the end of the bat. That one didn't have such a good sound to it as Orsburton flies out to walls. Two gone. 
No, but now they're starting to get a little bit of timing down on, on Fisher and starting to make some good contact. Haley Gorman. Stands in now. And looks at ball one. So a couple of early swings in the at bat for the Salukis here in the fourth. Tried to hold up, couldn't. When these two teams met uh, earlier this year, here on this field in Carbondale, Northern Iowa took two of three. They won the first one two to nothing. They lost the second one seven to one, so a lot of runs scored in that second one. And then Northern Iowa won the final game five to nothing. So these two teams can score, but right now the, the pitchers are, are doing all they can to keep them from crossing the plate. Two two pitch, or two and two now the count. As Gorman fouls off the two one pitch. So Jamie Fisher, only the base on balls to Ashton. The only blemish on her record thus far. Well pitched game by both sides. And this is more the type of game frankly that you expect as you start getting into the later rounds of a tournament. Strike three swinging Haley Gorman is the second strikeout victory or victim and with that Jamie Fisher now the career record holder at you and I more on that coming up. We're halfway through this with no score. Yeah, I'm married. Doesn't matter. You do that for me. Really? Yeah, I'd like that. Who are you talking to? Uh, it's Jake from State Farm. Sounds like a really good deal. Jake from State Farm at 3 in the morning? Who is this? It's, it's Jake from State Farm. What are you wearing, Jake from State Farm? Uh, khakis. She sounds hideous. Well, she's a guy, so. Another reason more people stay with State Farm. Get to a better state. In this town, there's only one pizza joint that has your best interests in mind. They make every single pie from scratch. The freshest ingredients, 100% real mozzarella. Oh, and if your engine's running a quart low, well, they can take care of that too. Casey's General Store, a convenience store and a whole lot more. Right now, you can get a large made from scratch taco pizza for just $13.99. Let's take a look at our game recap, a presentation of Casey's General Store, Convenience Store, and a whole lot more. And the story thus far has been defense and pitching, Laura Leonard. Uh, it really has. Both pitchers have uh, done a good job of getting the ball around the plate, and the defense behind them has been very, very good. And that strikeout there giving you uh, and I's Jamie Fisher the all-time record at Northern Iowa. First pitch swinging, Hannah Borschel lines out to Michelle Bradley. So one gone here in the bottom of the fourth. Both of these teams very aggressive at the plate and going up, swinging away, trying to make something happen. Gina Brown stands in now with one gone against Brittany Lang. And a first pitch strike. And that pitch on that outside corner Brown didn't even make an attempt at it. That's a pitch that I think if you're lying in bad bunker, you're thinking, let's stay out there because that's a the pitch that's very hard to hit, and we're getting the call. At uh, career strikeout record at Northern Iowa, previously held by Sarah O'Byrne. She wrapped up her career in 1991. The Panthers made the NCAA tournament that year, so quite an accomplishment for Jamie Fisher, now the career strikeout record holder at Northern Iowa. And Fisher, of course, being able to do that as a sophomore. I was just, <laughs> I was just thinking that. She's got a couple more years to add to that record. Three and two now the count to Gina Brown. And I tell you what, Brittany Lang has been impressive. And there's a little pop to that pitch as well. And again, out there, they're hanging out there on that outside corner. 3-2 pitch. Fouled away. We'll have another one. But yeah, I'm impressed with Lang the way that she's just taken command 
of this game and, and the way she is approaching these hitters. Out of the way. And Northern Iowa is taking some aggressive swings. Yeah, they are. I, they're up there ready to hit, and you can tell just the, the body language when they step into the box. They are ready to swing. And another foul. But I like the fact that Lang is challenging them, don't you? Yeah, I do too. And I think we saw in a couple of games yesterday that uh, teams weren't as aggressive at the plate. Now, part of that had to do they were they had a game plan and they were waiting on maybe getting some walks and, and that kind of thing. But uh, you got to like it when teams come with their hitting shoes on. Great effort by Ashton, the third baseman for the Salukis, to lay out in foul territory. Tough play. She comes up just a little bit short. So a good battle here between Gina Brown in the batter's box and Brittany Lang in the circle. Another 3-2, and it's rifled through the box. Here's Glenn Sellers with another outstanding play. You said it, pitching and defense all game long, and this outfield for Southern Illinois has been amazing. They have made great plays behind Lang. How is that not a base hit? Look That's at how. It. Timed it perfectly and that was slicing away from her and she had a beat on it right off the bat and we've seen it a couple of times in this ball game where she is reading the ball very well off the bat gets a great jump and is able to camp under a ball that time she couldn't camp under it she had to lay out but what a fantastic play Samantha Reimer stands in now 0 for 2 grounded out to second her first trip up and what kind of bounce does that give you if you're a pitcher a lot and it gives you just even more confidence and she's confident right now but knowing that you have those kind of players behind you that they're making those plays for you that just uh, notches up that confidence another level and here's another nice play by Jana Spivey as the Southern Illinois Salukis are showing off their leather thus far this afternoon and that retires the side we are through four innings still no score they're two of a kind, and just like toddlers, puppies need food made for them. That's why there's Purina Puppy Chow. With all the essential nutrients your growing puppy needs, Purina Puppy Chow. Hello, I'm Rick Navarre, president of St. Louis-based Peabody Energy. Peabody is the world's largest coal company. Coal is vital to America. It provides half the electricity in the United States. Peabody fuels electricity needs in 21 countries on six continents. And we are a global leader in clean coal solutions, providing affordable energy security and made in America economic stimulus. I invite you to visit us at PeabodyEnergy.com. Who could resist the call of America's number one puppy food brand? with DHA and essential nutrients also found in mother's milk. Purina Puppy Chow. Top of the fifth inning and the defense continues to shine in this one. Another look at Mallory Duran Sellers and her outstanding defensive play. That was the second out of the bottom of the fourth inning off the bat of Gina Brown and Jana Spivey, the second baseman, following up with another one. And we move to the fifth inning. We've got quite a ball game going here. Well, and that's why you have somebody in center field that has a lot of speed as well. They have to cover a lot of ground, and Duran Sellers has done that several times in this ball game. First pitch into Allie Vadbunker is a strike. Each team with just one base runner so far. So it has been a pitching dominated affair, but as you just saw, the defense has certainly aided in that effort. Well, it really has, and uh, both of these teams, as you said, you would expect as you move along in a, in a conference championship and all the seeds have held true to form, the teams that are at the top of the conference are going to have the highest batting average, is going to have probably the best fielding percentages, and they're showing it off here today. Bad bunker behind on the count now, 0 and 2. And both of these pitchers working ahead in the count as well. They're getting on top of these hitters, and that changes your approach at the plate when you're in the box knowing that you're down in the count. It's the 0-2 on the way, and just getting a piece of it is Bad Bunker. Jamie Fisher and the by striking out. 
Haley Gorman to end the fourth inning, becoming the career leader in strikeouts. And you and I with 416. And she does so, so at the tail end of her sophomore year. This ball is well hit, though. Deep left field. It's gone. Allie Van Bunker with her eighth home run of the year. one nothing SIU. Well, they've been knocking on the door all day long. They've been able to drive the ball. Wind has held it up a little bit. It hasn't carried as well. But she got all of that one, and I think she knew it once it left her bat. And well, you see Borschel out there, too, Laura. I think she thought she might have a play. Yeah, I think uh, she thought she had a beat on it, got turned around a little bit, but that ball was over the fence. So a visit to the circle now as Ryan Jacobs is going to try to calm his star sophomore pitcher down. Now that's what you need to do. You need to go out. You need to calm everybody down. You can see the infield meeting by themselves, outfield meeting by themselves, and then uh, the battery mates and coach talking things over and just uh, an opportunity to say, you know what, had to score anyway, had to score one run anyway, so just keep it at one. Let's get out of this inning and get back up to hit. So a one nothing lead. That was the first hit given up by Jamie Fisher. And Jana Spivey stands in now with her team on top, one nothing. And let's see how Fisher responds. First pitch is high for a ball. And I think that was on an 0-2 count as well. Because I was thinking, you know, you got to shorten up your swing a little bit. And she, <laughs> she didn't. She went right after that pitch. 1-0 pitch. Not even at a ball and a strike. Well, you're right. One run, particularly from when you're the home team, isn't that big a deal. You, as you said, you have to score one anyway, but you want to hold it there. And you just want to stay in the groove or get back into the groove that, that you've been in, and they got you through the first 12 outs of the ball game without giving up a base hit. So here's a 2-1. Back through the box. That was hard hit as well in Southern Illinois. And Jada Spivey with the game's second base hit for the Salukis. And their timing looks much, much better right now against Fisher. That's a rocket right back through the box, and Fisher tried to glove it, but uh, that was on her too quickly. Shot out to center field, and well, again, second time through the lineup, get an opportunity to, to get a better look at what you're facing. So Meredith Wilson in the box now. Wilson. 0 oh for 1. And hitting is contagious. And once you start getting that feeling, you get a big hit like the Sluke he's got from Vad Bunker. Now everybody behind him feels a little bit better. The bunt, Fisher grabs it, throws to first. And Wilson executes the sacrifice. Spivey moves to second base. So with one out now, it's up to the eight, nine hitters to try to drive the run in from second base. And this becomes a huge spot in the ball game. This is a big spot because that second run for Southern Illinois would be big. If Northern Iowa can keep it at just at one, that gives them a little bit of momentum knowing that they just stopped it at that, at that one run. But a couple of shots to knock that run in from second base and you're eight and nine hitter right now. And in that nine spot, Michelle Bradley, who had a big hit last night. And is playing with a lot of confidence. Junker hit the ball very well to center field. Her first trip up, but was retired. So one and one now the count. And a runner at second base, that's Spivey. Here's the pitch, a wave and a miss. You know, we talked about how Southern Illinois had pretty good line on what Fisher was throwing, just didn't get the fat part of the bag, couldn't get all of the balls. They were getting them out to the outfield. They just weren't carrying, but uh, now all of a sudden they seem to, to have a beat on her pitching pattern. Two and two, the count. I don't know if you saw or if you noticed, Laura, the, the look on uh, Junker's face as she stood in before that last pitch. She is, as she swings and misses, she really wanted a challenge and uh, at least for that battle, Jamie Fisher wins it with her third strike out of the ball game. Well, as an athlete and a hitter in this spot, you know you want to come through and produce, and sometimes you press a little bit too much, and 
And that time Fisher was able to get Junker on strikes. So can Bradley come through again? She came through with the game winning home run yesterday against Creighton. Struck out her first trip up. That was in the third inning. Two are out. The runner at second is Jana Spivey. One in on Allie Vadbunker's solo home run. And the pitch. 0 oh and 2. Bradley thought that was a little bit out of the zone, but uh, you know, we've been getting that call. Both pitchers have been getting that call all day long. Here's the 0-2. In the dirt, it gets by the catcher. Reimer and moving to third is Spivey. Now that one was in the dirt and, and Reimer couldn't do anything but smother it and she just couldn't. It bounced away from her and, and uh, now with that run 60 feet away, that, uh, that puts a little more pressure on both catcher and pitcher. So Spivey advances the third on the wild pitch. One and two the count, but as we said in the last half inning, well, we were talking about Lang. We still just need to bear down and focus on the, the batter right now. The runner at third is, is not going to do anything if you get the hitter. And the important thing is, is you get that hitter right now, because if you don't, you are looking at Duran Sellers in the on-deck circle coming up. And the pitch ripped foul. She was well ahead of it, though. Now look for that off speed now. Anytime you see a hitter drill a ball that far foul, you figure they're going to come back with an off speed. But as the catcher in Reimer needs to make sure that if it's in the dirt, she needs to smother it. So one and two, the count. Bradley the batter. The runner is Spivey. Here's the pitch from Fisher. Outside, we're even, two and two. Nice stop by Reimer, too. I think was crossed up a little bit. Had to go across her body to keep that ball in her glove. So here's the 2-2. And again, Bradley staying alive. What a great at bat for Bradley, doing everything she can to either extend the inning or push that run across. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Chopped in front of the plate and Reimer elected to let it go foul. Well, interesting. I think it would have been a tough play at first, but the runner was coming in Spivey from third base, so if she would have picked it up, she could have just turned around and, and tagged Spivey, but it was a, it would have been an interesting play if she would have picked it up. I think it was a smart move to let it go foul. Well, you've got to make a split-second decision there, and I'm guessing also factoring in for Reimer is the fact that it would have been a tough throw at first. Yeah, she did not have a great angle where she would have fielded that ball. So Bradley continues to stay alive. See if Fisher will make her catcher's decision look like a good one. The 2 2. A little high, 3 and 2. Boy, I think they thought they had it. I think Reimer was getting ready to throw that, roll that ball out to the pitcher's mound and uh, go to the dugout. What a battle by Michelle Bradley. So here's the 3 2. Outside, ball 4. You credit Michelle Bradley for that at bat, working, fouling off a lot of pitches extending the inning to bring up your leadoff hitter, Duran Sellers. So Mallory Duran Sellers is grounded to short on a couple of occasions. She is the Valley Player of the Year, entering the ball game with a 367 batting average and a 505 on base percentage. Runners at the corner with two outs and the pitch is outside. Saluki's getting on the board. Ali Vadbunker with a homer to left to lead off the inning. Well, you don't know if they're going to send Bradley or not. That one's on the outside corner. You might at some point here in this at bat see if they're going to try to force the issue with the defense and send Bradley to try to get her into scoring position and see how Northern Iowa will play that. Bradley one for one in steal attempts. Looked like she might be taking off there. Two and one now the count. Yeah, I thought she was going to take off for second base, but uh, 
Now with a two and one count, gonna have to come into Duran Sellers. There's the pitch. Went with a change, it appeared, and now the count is three and one, and Kelsey Ashton is on deck. So if you're if you're Duran Sellers right now, you're looking for something to drive. You're looking for something right down the middle of the plate, and uh, if it's not there, take the walk. She does, and the bases are loaded. Now big spot for Ashton now stepping into the batter's box. And Keep in mind, too, that Ryan Jacobs has been to the circle once already this inning. He did that after the Van Bunker home run to try to settle Fisher down. Now Reimer just took a moment to go out and, and talk to Fisher as well. So trying to do a little coaching as well as calling the game from behind the plate. And the pitch in there for strike one. This may wind up being the game right here. Getting late, top of the fifth inning. Southern Illinois already with a one nothing lead. Bases loaded, two outs, and the 0-1. On oh, the outside quarter, tough pitch. And you gotta believe in your defense here as well. And Defense is back because there's two outs, so you can get a force at any base. And they're getting a, giving a warning to Coach Kerry Blaylock. Came out, didn't like that call. And uh, the umpire behind the plate is giving a, a verbal warning. Kerry Blaylock leaving the dugout. And you saw the shot there. Well, the fans like it. Yeah, the well, she, like gave the, she gave the fans a little encouragement, too, as she went back into the dugout. That's what fans are. That's, that's what your fans are for, to back you up. So the 0-2. Fisher tried to stretch the corner a little bit more. Home plate umpire Jeff Sloan not biting. Well, they've been getting that call all day long. You have to believe that they may stay out there. So here's the one, two. Aiming for the inside corner that time. Spivey is your runner at third. Bradley at second, Duran Sellers at first. The 2-2 two -two pitch, swung on, and a great play at third. Throw to first is in time, and Whitney Clean may have saved the ball game. She went up as high as she could go to grab that ball and make uh, make that throw. A great play. But the Salukis touch up Fisher for a run. They leave the bases stranded through four and a half. SIU one, you and I nothing. Why do I play? I play to decide her fate. I play for the power of the ball in my hand. I play because I can choose my own fate. I play to be the hero. Whether you're in Carbondale, Illinois for the big game, vacationing or on business, stay at the official hotel of the Missouri Valley Conference, the Holiday Inn Conference Center. The Holiday Inn Conference Center features relaxing guest rooms, an indoor pool, workout facilities, and a free high-speed wireless. Coolahan's next to the Holiday Inn Conference Center features a huge variety of food and drink offerings each day. The place to stay when following the Salukis or your favorite Valley school, the Holiday Inn Conference Center, the official hotel of the MVC. Northern Iowa's Whitney Pleen keeps her team in the ball game with an outstanding defensive play. That saves at least one run and, and probably two. Oh yeah, absolutely. And she went up at her highest peak, was able to glove that, uh, saves the day for Northern Iowa. Now they get the opportunity to try to get that run back. Be sure to catch our next game as Galvin lost it to Duran Sellers in left field. One gone here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Our next game coming up at 2.30 Central as second seed Illinois State meets third seed Drake right here at Charlotte West Stadium. And you'll be able to catch that one on Valley Live. Now Pleen, after the outstanding defensive play, stands in to try to get the UNI offense going. One gone, bottom of the fifth inning. Brittany Lang in the circle, throwing a shutout thus far and pitching with the lead for the first time after Allie Bad Badbunker's solo home run. 
Oh, and had to sit a little bit. That was a long inning. The, the game had been going at a pretty good pace and three up, three down for the most part. Now Lang has, has had to sit on the, the bench for a little bit, waiting for teammates to hit. And Glean squirts a hit into right field. Just the second hit given up by Lang. And just the third base runner. Let's have another look at our State Farm replay. Just was able to kind of inside out that and uh, squirt it into right field. But that's a base runner that the Panthers are looking for. Walls stands in. Flew out to center field. Now time is called as Bad Bunker maybe was crossed up. Well, that's what you need to do is just go out and talk about things and and get on the same page. Now you have a base runner that uh, it's not a bad base stealer. You want to make sure you have a good pitch to handle if you need to come up and make that throw. So you're going to miss, even at the ball and the strike. So Southern Illinois trying to advance to tomorrow's championship game. It'll be a two central. Here's the pitch and a bunt. It's in the air and Lang up to grab it. And I think a good play there by Lang, not just to field the ball, obviously, but I think a lot of people would have had the temptation to make the throw to first to try to get Plain uh, scrambling back. And I, she took a look and opted to just pocket it. So yeah, very, gone. very smart move because uh, she could have easily thrown that ball away as Spivey wasn't quite there yet to cover the base and there was a big scramble and so just a smart move, get the out, put it in your pocket, and uh, face the next hitter. Well, she probably could have had Plain, but as you're saying, it would have taken a perfect throw. It would have taken Spivey being there in time, and in that situation, your, your risk-reward analysis does not work in your favor, so right. good decision. No need to make that extra throw when you don't have to. Julie Hunter ahead on the count, 3-0. She walked her last trip. And she is trying to roll the lineup over for Mackenzie Day on deck. Catcher Allie Van Bunkers. Home run the difference thus far in this one, the 3-0 pitch right down central. And taken all the way, and that's a smart move. You don't want to, you're not getting the pitch that you like. Go ahead and take that strike. Now you have one to really work with here, and you're still ahead in the, in the count. The 3-1 ripped to center, but Mallory Duran Sellers there to make the catch. So the one-out single is wasted by you and I. Five incomplete. SIU with a one-nothing lead. Thanks for the ticket, man. Thanks to my state farm agent for saving me 480 bucks. No sweat. Hey, look, we're on fan cam. Y'all ready for this? Having the extra cash sure helps. And I can save even more by combining your auto and renter's policies. Cool. But what if we bought a house? Auto and home? We have even bigger savings for that. Wow, sounds good. More savings any way you shake it. Want to spit some nachos? Sure. Get to a better state. State Farm. The online store at mbc-sports.com is the number one stop to get Missouri Valley Conference merchandise. With thousands of items, you'll find all the MVC gear you need in one place. You'll find the best selection, great customer service, and fast three-day shipping for only $4.99. You'll also get an easy and enjoyable experience designed to help you find exactly what you're looking for. So if you want the best place to get Missouri Valley Conference gear, head to the online store at mbc-sports.com. Today's date in NBC history brought to you by the St. Charles, Missouri Convention and Visitors Bureau on May 11, 2007. Ashley Hamby and Cassidy Scoggins combined on a six hit shutout as Southern Illinois blanked Illinois State 3 0 in the semifinals of the State Farm MVC tournament. For your next trip to the Show Me State, go to historicstcharles.com or call 800 366 2427. Bottom of the sixth inning in a one nothing ball game and Taylor Orsburn the third place hitter and first baseman for the Saluki stands in against Jamie Fisher. Fisher's given up just a couple of hits both of those came in the fifth inning and this one hit the center field Galvin makes the catch. 
It was interesting to see how Fisher responds coming back uh, after a short time on the bench. That was a quick inning and Southern Illinois made of uh, UNI when they were up to bat, but Fisher coming right back after the hitters and again, good defense behind her. And an aggressive swing by Orsber and this one chopped and again, it's clean making a leaping catch. Tell you what, she's got good quick hands. She's got good quick feet over there. And uh, as we've said many times before, as a third baseman, you have to be ready for when that ball comes to you. And twice, she's timed her leap perfectly. So two gone, and Van Bunker stands in now and looks at strike one. Van Bunker homering her last trip to the plate. Home run number eight. With that homer, she took over the team lead from Spivey, who took sole possession of the team lead, I should say. And quickly, Van Bunker behind on the count, 0-2. Wonder if they're going to change their approach at all with Bad Bunker. They had her down 0 2 the last time and she drilled the home run. Hopped up. That's a good point. And I'm sure they all know that in the dugout what pitch was thrown, how they went after her the last time when they had her down 0 2, and uh, see if they're going to change that. Laced, and it's foul. Down the right field line. But a dangerous hitter, obviously. And in the top of the sixth inning, Fisher, the Valley's pitcher of the year, trying to give her offense as good a chance as possible. So we'll try the 0-2 again. Here it is. Swing and a miss on a changeup. So one, two, three. Go the Salukis. We are now through five and a half. And it's SIU holding on to a one nothing lead. Where can you get the best milk? From Tom, from Russ, from Laura, and Maggie. It comes from all of us. We're Prairie Farms, and we don't just work for the dairy. We are the dairy, making sure the dairy products in your child's school, in your stores, and on your table are fresh and healthy. Handling with the kind of care that your family deserves. We are Prairie Farms Dairy. Ask for us, the farmer-owned dairy. Slu Care Sports Medicine Services offer evaluation and treatment of all sports-related injuries. Whether you're a professional athlete, high school or college athlete, or an active individual of any age, we have on-site diagnosis, perform arthroscopic and reconstructive surgery, as well as provide comprehensive rehabilitation services to get you back in the game. To schedule an appointment at our Midtown or West County offices, call 314-977-4440 or visit www.sluhospital.com. Be sure to watch tomorrow's title game of the State Farm MVC Softball Championship with the winner receiving the league's automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. Keep in mind that the game will not be seen here on Valley Live. Rather, coverage will start at 2 o'clock Central tomorrow on Fox Sports Midwest, Fox Sports Indiana, Fox Sports Kansas City, Fox College Sports, Comcast Sportsnet Chicago, and ESPN3. Bottom of the sixth inning, R.C. McBride, Laura Leonard, Laura, oh, 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 <laughs> Laura Leonard. That's me. Yep. That's <laughs> only been working together, what, eight years? Give or take. Yeah. But again, it's the first time that's happened. I so know. we'll that's get it good. that way. We got a good track record going. It becomes a key inning. Here in the bottom of the sixth inning, and that's because obviously it's getting late. And in the top of the order is due up third time through the order for Northern Iowa to face Brittany Lang and Mackenzie Day. The leadoff hitter singled the center. Her last time up looks at ball one, and now we're even at a ball and a strike. Mackenzie Day has an interesting stance at the plate, really crouches down low, gets those hands out in front, wiggles them a little bit, but she sure has some good pop in that bat. So the 1-1. One, one. A little low, 2-1. Day, Turner, Borschel, should anybody get on? Gina Brown. So if you're the Panthers, the tournament's top seed, this is the inning you want to make it happen. Mallory Duran-Sellers 
with the catch. And they really need to stop hitting it out there. They do. Well, she's <laughs> gobbling up everything that comes her way, and, and they are getting a good piece of the bat on the ball. They're, they're getting some good hits, but this defense is right on top of it. I'm going to see a pinch hitter here. Courtney Dunker, a senior from New Lenox, Illinois, and Lincoln Way Central High School into the game. Dunker, a 185 hitter, but five home runs and 25 driven in. She has 22 hits this year, five of which have been home runs. Well, that's why you uh, insert a pinch hitter at this point in time. You need to get that run, and she's got the power. There's a good cut there, but that's an even better pitch. Down even at the ball and a strike. Dunker had 14 home runs last year. That is tied for the UNI single season record. And she's behind one and two. You can see a little smile on Dunker's face. That was, uh, again, on the outside part of the plate. She didn't think it was a strike, but knowing where that zone is, down in the count, you have to protect. Lang is really extending, trying to get Dunker to chase. Nothing doing. Dunker also, Dunker rather, fifth in career slugging percentage, but she swings and misses here to Dawn, to Dawn in the sixth inning. And part of that was knowing where that pitch prior to that one was called on that outside corner. That was off the plate, but she had to go after it not knowing if it was going to be called or not, and so just couldn't get the coverage out over the plate to try to foul that one off. Anna Borschel, 0 for 2, stands in. And a chopper to second. Tough hop, and the throw is not in time. Yeah, we've seen that several times. And with this field, they've been getting some funny hops. And that one just kind of came up on Spivey. She had a tough time getting that one cleanly into her glove. That's a tough air, it is. but it is an air. And this brings Gina Brown to the plate, representing the potential go-ahead run. Borschel with a little bit of speed, 9 of 11 in the stolen base department. Not that they're going to steal here, but if you do find a ball into the gap, you know that you have some speed on the base paths. Not even to add a ball and a strike. Brown is second on the team in a home run. She has eight. The 1-1. Just off the outside corner here, the Saluki crowd wanted it. It was just a little up and Nice thing about Brown, she never steps out of that batter's box. She just gets ready to go again. She's waiting for that pitcher to challenge her. Tying run at first here in the bottom of the sixth. The pitch popped up. And coming to get it herself is Lang, and the side is retired, and Lang pitches out of a potentially dangerous situation. So six are complete, and the homestanding Salukis with a 1-0 lead. It's the playoffs. We haven't served a single calorie all season, and we're not serving one now. If you can't handle it, go sell foam fingers in the parking lot. How many calories are you carrying? Zero! How much Pepsi taste? A lot! Now get out there and make me proud. Yeah! Pepsi Max, zero calories, maximum Pepsi taste. Cardinals fans, we invite you to join us at home plate this season. We want thousands in Cardinals Nation to make a pledge to Homers for Health. Each time a Cardinal player hits a home run, we will all make a contribution to SSM Cardinal Glennon Children's Medical Center to help cure kids. Pledge forms are available at all Deerberg stores. Big dramatic walk-off home run should cost double. Centene Charitable Foundation will match your pledge to Homers for Health, powered by Peabody and you. Pledge at Glennon.org. I know a thing or two about walk-offs like this. Don't walk off. For all the latest on the State Farm NBC Softball Championship, the upcoming State Farm NBC Baseball Championship, and other spring sports, be sure to 
Look at the official website of the Missouri Valley Conference, mvc-sports.com. Top of the seventh inning in a one-nothing game, and standing in, swinging and fouling away at the first pitch is Jana Spivey. Spivey one for two, singled and was stranded at third in the fifth inning. That was the inning that Jamie Fisher gave up the home run to Van Bunker and then managed to get herself into a bases loaded situation. But Whitney Plain with a great defensive play, able to retire the side, made a great play on Ashton's chopper at third. So Southern Illinois looking for a little insurance here against the Valley. Pitcher of the year, the pitcher of the year and the player of the year going at it in this game. And, and one of them is going to see her season come to an end. This one laced into shallow left. Coming on, not able to get it is Borschel and taking the turn but stopping is Spivey. So a leadoff base hit for Jana Spivey. And that's a start that Southern Illinois was looking for. You're right, they want to pad this lead a little bit. Nobody out now and they've got their leadoff runner on. Great effort by Borschel out in left field and did a nice job of really swiping at it when it got down on the ground so it didn't scoot by her. Otherwise, that could end up double or triple. Meredith Wilson will stand in now, and that is a big run at first base. That's a big, big run, and you have to figure that they're going to try to move her around, go station to station. SIU this year, 20 and 1 in games in which it led after six innings. The throw to second is in time. At first, it's not in time. Boy, a risky play, but it works out for you and I. And once again, Pleen comes up big. Pleen was right on top of that and jumped all over that bunt. It was bunted a little bit too hard. She was right there. Nice, strong throw to get that lead oh. runner. It's very close and very close at first as well. We have a pinch runner, Kaylee Harker will run for Wilson at first. So one gone now. And Junker stands in, grounder to second, throw to first is in time on the play. Harker advances to second. But two are now out. Now and look who's coming to play, Michelle Bradley. Yesterday's hero for the Salukis. She will try to add some insurance for her club here. Jamie Fisher looks in and the pitch is fouled away. Boy, ready on that first pitch. Come up first pitch swinging, very aggressive. That just tells you that Bradley has a lot of confidence right now at the plate. Fouled away again, so 0-2 the count on Bradley. But it's probably worth noting that it was an 0-2 count on which Van Bunker homered for the game's only run. So you don't want to let down here just because you're ahead. No, and sometimes that happens, and, and uh, you take a little off of a pitch, and I think that came back to haunt the Fisher. Clean throws out Bradley, and the side is retired. So. Final opportunity for the top seeded Northern Iowa Panthers as we head to the bottom of the seventh. And the Salukis with a 1 0 lead. Bueno, who's this? Oh, him? This little guy's my Twitter. Your Twitterer? Yeah, you know. I say funny stuff sometimes, or something funny will happen. He tweets it out to my fans. Oh, yeah? Like what? I don't know. Stuff. Head to Bush Stadium for Budweiser Championship Beer Stein Night, Friday, May 25th, when the Cards host the Phillies. Tickets available at cardinals.com. They sacrifice. They protect. They answer the call at all times. They are the men and women of our armed forces, and their will, heart, dedication, and service to the country that we call home is nothing less than extraordinary. Return the favor. Text the word RETURN to 90999 now for your $10 donation or simply visit returnthefavor.org. 
Please join us in returning the favor. Defensive substitution for Southern Illinois as we head to the bottom of the seventh inning. Morgan Barshan enters the game for Meredith Wilson in right field. Barshan, a junior from Arcadia, California. Final three opportunities for Northern Iowa. The tournament's top seed to face Brittany Lang for SIU in the first delivery. Maybe showing a little bit, uh, a little bit of nerves or trying to overthrow that one. Well, and I think if you're Northern Iowa, you know, you've, you've come up uh, hitting, swinging at that first pitch all game long. Maybe this is a situation where you sit back a little bit, make uh, Lang work and, and come to you, see if you can coax a walk out of her. Samantha Reimer, all Valley first team selection catcher. I hit on the count 2-0. 2-1 oh. now. Reimer, Galvin, and Pleen do up for the Panthers in the bottom of the seventh inning. This tournament's top seeds have not fared well of late. And the Panthers in danger of exiting in their first game. Reimer, 15 walks on the season, so a fairly patient hitter. Just misses ball four and some groans from the Southern Illinois University faithful. That was very close, that was high and tight, and it was around the zone, but uh, the umpire didn't think so. So Northern Iowa has their leadoff hitter on, and that's exactly what they needed. So a pinch runner coming in. This will be Haley Creener, the junior from Fort Atkinson, <laughs> Iowa. She will run at first. And also a pinch hitter going to come into the game. Leah Embry will be the batter. So the wheels are turning here in the bottom of the seventh inning with the season on the line. And Embry showing bunt. I'm going to take a timeout. Coach Blaylock going to come out and talk to the team. You could see the way the defense was shifted and moving in for the bunt. And looks like we're going to have a new pitcher as well. Coming into the ball game is Katie Bertelson. She will try to save this one after picking up the complete game victory yesterday. Bertelson on the season, 13 and 11. A 390 ERA, she does lead the team with four saves, 147 and a third innings pitch. She's given up 159 hits, 96 runs, 82 of those earned. She struck out 74, walked 46, and batters hitting 267 against her. But a big situation right now. Leah Embry, the pinch hitter. So three substitutions all coming at once here. Two for Northern Iowa, one for SIU. It appeared after one pitch as though Ryan Jacobs was instructing Embry to sacrifice. Well, they had the defense already pulled in at the corners. She showed bunt, got the ball, and uh, you have to figure the same strategy goes here. You need to get that runner into scoring position. And, and as the hitter, you have to make sure that you deaden that ball. You can't drop the head of the bat. You just have to get it in play. And there's more activity in the SIU bullpen. That's Alyssa Wonderlich working down there. The bunt is in the air, and it's caught by Orsburn. So Embry could not get down the sacrifice. I think what she was trying to do, she knew that the corners were coming in, charging so hard, she wanted to try to pop it over the first baseman's head. So Whitney Plain stands in now. She's had a great ball game, a couple of stellar defensive plays. She also has one of the two hits, and this one is lifted to deep left, carrying, but now underneath it and making the catch is Michelle Bradley. You could hear you could feel the <laughs> SIU fans holding their breath. Everybody just, it got very quiet in here in this ballpark as that ball kept carrying and carrying out to left. And then when Bradley finally settled underneath it, everybody breathed a sigh of relief. As Pleen came about 10 or so feet shy of a walk-off home run to center team into the championship game. But instead now it's Melissa Walls standing in and Brittany Lang is one out away from the victory and 
Bertelson, one out away from a huge save to send her team into tomorrow's championship. Bertelson delivers. Count even now at a ball and a strike. Well, if you're Northern Iowa, you've been in situations like this before, and you just have to be patient at the plate. Still have that one out to play with. Misses, two and one. So it all comes down to this. The winning run is in the batter's box. Melissa Walls ahead on the count. Ground ball to short and the toss. And Southern Illinois advances to tomorrow's championship game. The Salukis will take on either Illinois State or Drake as SIU upsets the top-seeded UNI Panthers. Well, nice job by Bertelson to come in and get the save and shut down a potential rally by the, the Panthers as they get their leadoff runner on. A 1-0 ball game. Allie Van Bunker's home run is the difference, and SIU advances to tomorrow's championship. The 2012 State Farm MVC Softball Championship is brought to you by State Farm. For auto, home, life, and banking, get to a better state. By Casey's General Store, a convenience store, and a whole lot more. By the farmer-owned Prairie Farms family of dairies, Prairie Farms Highland and Roberts, serving farm-fresh dairy products throughout Mid-America, and by Coventry Healthcare. Let's take a look at our players of the game in this one, brought to you by State Farm. For auto, home, life, and banking, find an agent or get a quote at statefarm.com. I think we're going to go with our pitchers for our players of the game. Jamie Fisher, the pitcher of the year in the Valley, only made one mistake, Laura. And it was a big mistake, but otherwise, she had a great game, kept these hitters off balance all game long. One pitch, one home run, and that's the difference in the ball game. And Brittany Lang gets the W for SIU. And as you can see, she was able to field her position and give a lot of credit to her defense behind her. Our Play of the game is a presentation of Rawlings, the official baseball of the Missouri Valley Conference and the NCAA championship. Champions choose Rawlings, and I suppose this one's pretty obvious. Well, on an 0-2 pitch, Allie Vadbunker drills it deep to left, and that's the difference in the ball game. One of just five hits and the only run in the ball game. It was a pitcher's duel and a thriller but SIU advances to tomorrow's championship game. Coming up in a little less than an hour, 2.30 Central, our second seed, Illinois State, will take on third seed Drake in our second semifinal contest from Dr. Charlotte West Stadium. Congratulations to the Salukis on advancing to the championship tomorrow. For Laura Leonard and our entire WebStream Productions crew, I'm R.C. McBride. Thanks for joining us on Valley Live.